Byron Donalds paints a vivid picture of how many Americans feel about the rise in crime, framing it through a personal story that underscores his broader point. Law enforcement isn't being adequately supported in cities across the nation. He recounts how, in New York City, he needed assistance from an employee just to access simple items like razor blades, a consequence of rampant theft. To him, this is more than just a retail inconvenience. It's a symbol of a larger issue, one where public safety is eroding due to a lack of strong backing for the police in urban areas. Where the American people truly are is they at least want to hear what somebody is thinking full-throated versus Kamala Harris, who is completely scripted, like I badly guess, scripted. I guess I wonder, and there's nothing coming out of her. What is the policy then? If it's yeah. not that, then what is actually the solution? He wants to make sure that police are supported so they're upholding the law. In every city in our country, I was in uh, Dwayne Reed last night here in New York just trying to get razor blades so I can get a fresh shave to today, for today. I had to press the button for the, for the attendant to come to open up the case just so I can get a pack of razor blades. That's what's going on in every major city of America. Americans are fed up with that kind of stuff. It happens because you do have a dereliction of support for law enforcement in too many cities in America. And so there's a major angst going on amongst the American people. Donald Trump said a comment for five seconds. That's not setting policy. That's Donald revealing Trump. the angst of, of the American Don, people. Don't just apologize for him. Don't just apologize for him. Are we going to talk about the rhetoric directed at Donald Trump? Because we do realize that he's been trying to kill... Are you going to continue to try not to answer the question? So you're not going to answer what I... Donald uses this example to highlight what he sees as a major flaw in cities governed by progressive leaders. He argues that policies reducing the police presence or restricting their effectiveness have created environments where crime thrives. This illusion of support for law enforcement, he contends, leaves ordinary citizens feeling both unsafe and frustrated, contributing to a broader societal breakdown. Policies like defund the police, he claims, only make the situation worse, fueling a public sense of dissatisfaction. In his critique, Donalds also takes aim at figures like Kamala Harris, reflecting a more widespread public sentiment that Democratic leaders are out of touch with the everyday concerns of Americans, particularly around issues of crime and safety. In contrast, he views Donald Trump as a figure who, despite criticism for his often impromptu remarks, channels the frustrations of everyday people. Trump, Donalds argues, may not always offer polished policy proposals, but he taps into a collective angst over the direction of the country. At its core, Donald's argument resonates with a call for a return to law and order, emphasizing the importance of personal responsibility and robust policing. Many Americans, he suggests, see these values as the antidote to the public safety issues exacerbated by progressive policies in major cities. 